All right, so in this one, we're going to be looking at accessibility devices and specifically devices for accessibility and data processing. Okay, so first and foremost, what is accessibility or what are accessibility devices? It's also known as assistive technology and it's defined as external devices that are designed, made or adapted to assist a person to perform a particular task, just like any other peripheral device, to be honest. Uh, access to assistive technology devices is essential for many people with disabilities and is an important part of any development strategy. Now, simply put, these devices were created, made, adapted, changed to assist people mainly with disabilities. It's not only used by those people or people with disabilities, but mainly used by them. All right, so the first device we have here is a trackball, right? This looks very much like a mouse but it works in a slightly different way. Whereas a mouse, you actually have to move the mouse around on a flat surface or a relatively flat surface to actually get the cursor to move on screen. With a trackball, it stays in one location. This actual frame, the black section or the gray or white section does not actually move. However, what moves is the ball in the center. So you move the ball and the, uh, and, uh, the cursor on screen will actually move as well. That's how this works. This might be good for people with limited hand mobility. So Whereas people who are not disabled or have an issue with their hand, they can move the mouse, no issue. Some people, this is how they have to use um, a GUI with a mouse. Next, we have touchscreen. I think this is quite obvious. This is very user friendly. Um, it's moved away from being used by people with disabilities to being used widely, for, as you can see, with laptops, mobile phones, tablets, and even some TVs now are touchscreen devices. It's a lot easier to navigate with a touchscreen device compared to using a mouse reason being you can have much better accuracy a lot quicker in some cases next device we have is eye motion sensors not really used much however you do see them in movies and some people for example stephen hawking when he actually when he used to write his papers because he had very limited mobility um, his speech wasn't that great this is one of the ways he actually wrote his papers he used to identify the character on screen and maybe blink twice or three times and then it would actually select that character and that that's how you would actually type things out all right now finally we have a braille embosser and if you're not sure what this is braille is how people with visual impairments ergo blind people that's how they read they have these tiny dips if i can find an image here oh let's get rid of the embosser so um here we have so this is roughly what Braille will, would look like to us. To a blind person, they can actually, or someone who's visually impaired, they can actually feel these dots out and actually read and understand what's on the paper. So the embosser itself is the thing that puts those dips into the paper. So these are simply dips and ridges put into the paper, okay? All right, so next we have manual and automatic data processing. Manual is simply where an individual person uh, has to do most or all of the steps themselves. Automatic is normally where the user initiates or starts doing the thing and the computer or the system or the machine will then take over and do the rest. So the first one I'm going to go through is automatic first. Um, here we have biometric readers. As we know what biometric means, that means biology. Um, so this is actually stuff like your fingerprint sensor on your phone, your facial recognition system, here, they normally tend to use fingerprint sensors. It's probably the quickest, most accurate way to use biometric data. Well, one of them anyway. Next, we have barcode readers. We know what barcodes are. We have barcodes and we have QR codes, right? Barcodes are simply lines on a one-dimensional space. The lines only go in one direction, up, and that's it, okay? Whereas QR codes, they go in a two-dimensional space. We have x-axis. And we have a y-axis don't worry too much about that this process is automatic because once the user scans the actual barcode it gives them all the information that they want so when you go to the store rather than having type this long number in here the cashier simply scans the barcode and all the information comes up the color of the thing you're trying to buy the size how much it costs how much they have in stock whether you can actually buy it sometimes you might not be able to buy stuff like alcohol so it brings up all of that information just from scanning the barcode. Next, we have OMR, that's optical mark recognition. Now, this is not something that you see a lot in the UK, for example, 
But in the Caribbean, this is how many tests, well, around the world as well, this is how many tests are done. So you're given questions. Uh, you have to, for example, work out the math question and you, you're given one of four or five answers. And if, for example, the answer was A, uh, you would have to shade in A on a, piece, on a separate piece of paper which you're given. Now, when it's time for this to be marked, an individual does not have to sit there and mark it, so it's a lot quicker. What happens, this is fed through a machine, which is this machine here, and the machine actually detects what has been shaded in. So if it decides that, okay, this is A, and A is correct, then you get one mark for that. If you decide that the 11 is B, and it's correct, you get another mark for that, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, finally, we have RFID, Radio Frequency Identification Device. Now, quite simply, this is used to transmit data. Some of the shops that you go into and you see those tags on clothes, some of those are RFID tags. RFID tags can be used for really close um, transferring of data as well. Rather than using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, this, is, this uses a lot less energy. And again, this is automatic. There doesn't need to be someone there constantly entering the information. I can simply tap my wallet against, I don't know, um, the room of the hotel and the door would open simply because it has an RFID tag and an RFID reader which communicate with each other. Right, so finally we have manual data processing, right? So a few options, let's say, are, for example, using a database and someone entering all these details. Now, this has to be done manually by someone, so that's a manual process. There are ways to automate this, but since we're talking about manual, that's one there as well. When we look at survey responses as well, nowadays we have a very smart online system uh, which can actually get people's responses and aggregate them for us. However, some people still prefer to do this by hand. So they'll go through all 20 questionnaires or all 20 surveys and figure out what each person said for question A, and then note that down somewhere, what they said for question B, note that down somewhere, so on and so forth, okay? So manually entering survey responses into some database or into some spreadsheet, whatever, it's manual. Uh, marking test papers, this is quite a big one as well. If you put for the previous one using optical mark recognition, you should put for this one marking a test paper manually. For some subjects, for example, IT, computer science, there aren't ways to do that easily um, with optical mark recognition. So we have to mark these papers manually. We have to go through and read what this person has said to see if they deserve the mark. Now, finally, I'm going to look at ordering food online. I think everyone here um, has used Uber Eats or Deliveroo at some point, or you've gone to a restaurant. When you go to speak to the person who needs to order the food, that's a manual process. That person has to then either write it down on a piece of paper, you put it into their tablet or mobile phone to then send it to the chef in the kitchen to make the food be cooked, okay? So that as well is a manual process. All right, thank you guys. Um, this format of video, I think, might work better than me creating the PowerPoints because I can show you guys images on screen. I can explain things within context, and hopefully that makes more sense. Um, stay tuned for the next one.